The Whirlwind cockpit layout was considered to be one of the best by its pilots, a testament to the ergonomic design built into the concept of a small single seat twin engine aircraft. The structural construction of the cockpit section was an integral component of the design philosophy to reduce the pilot workload and fatigue as much as possible. The diagonal diaphragm bulkhead being so arranged to house a great deal of the instrumentation and equipment for ease of pilot access. P7056 represents a late production aircraft with the rearranged cockpit. The whirlwind was equipped with the standard blind flying instrument panel mounted on anti-vibration brackets directly in front of the pilot. The six main instruments being the artificial horizon, the altimeter, slip and turn indicator, rate of climb indicator, direction indicator and an air speed indicator. The WFP is most fortunate to have an original blind flying panel and instrument mounts in P7056. The upper central panel forms a foundation for the Bar and Stroud reflector sight. Positioned to the starboard side are the gun sight switches and station keeping switches. On the port side it holds the Kai gas windscreen de-icing pump and the port side station keeping switches. A number of aircraft control systems are mounted on this panel. At the top are the engine magneto switches and safety locks. They themselves sit below the undercarriage position indicator and fit to the starboard side of the undercarriage position indicator switches. Directly below the magneto switches are the flap and undercarriage levers in their respective gate housings. Position to the port side of the lever gate is the six day clock. The undercarriage indicator and switches along with the magneto switches and the clock are extremely rare and original whirlwind fit equipment. The starboard side panel houses the main instrumentation for the engine management. The top section holds the two engine tachometers both genuine period instruments but unknown if they originated from a whirlwind. Situated inboard of the lower tachometer is the pull and release operating handle for the signal of the day equipment. Below these are the two supercharger boost gauges and below them are the two oil temperature gauges. The two rectangular instruments are the oil pressure gauges sitting just above the engine coolant temperature gauges. All these gauges while being standard types and used in many other early World War II aircraft are very rare to find and very expensive. It was necessary for the WFP to manufacture a number of replicas to complete the cockpit fit out. The two fuel tank gauges sit at the upper end of the bulkhead. These gauges are period examples and very rare. It's now almost impossible to find a pair of 70 gallon low tankage gauges. On the outside of the fuel gauges sit the two pull handles for the engine cutout equipment. The two fire extinguisher push buttons occupy the middle of the bulkhead, just above the rudder bar leg position cable pull handle. The lower end of the bulkhead holds the two toddle pull release handles for the parachute flare tubes. Mounted on an angle bracket above the fuel gauges, the standard oxygen gauge and regulator can be seen. Just aft of the gauges are the identify friend or foe equipment self-destruct push buttons fitted so to as fire the explosives in the IFF equipment 
to prevent the top secret gear falling into enemy hands. The Morse transmitting signalling equipment is fitted to the cockpit skin just aft of the IFF switches. The centre of the cockpit wall is occupied by the standard ministry compass, below which sits the rack that holds the spare reflector sight bulbs. The lower aft wall holds a bracket that carries the vacuum suction gauge and control valve along with the propeller anti-icing rear stat. Just above the bracket sits the oxygen supply valve and above that the high pressure hydraulic gauge. All the equipment except in the pressure gauge are original period fittings. At the forward end of the bulkhead is a housing bracket where the engine start push buttons are arranged. Immediately behind the housing sits the throttle and mixture control quadrant box mounted on a subframe from the cockpit side frames. Above the throttle box on a bracket angled out from the cockpit wall sits the voltmeter. Mounted on the diaphragm bulkhead sandwiched between the throttle and propeller pitch control boxes is the landing light housing bracket and three-way switch. Above the pitch control box mounted on a cross frame plate on the cockpit wall sits the radio controller for the later TR1133A set. The actual type fitted to the whirlwind had a unique to the aircraft wiring connection. As far as is known, no examples are now in existence. The WFP was fortunate to acquire a unit from a P-51 Mustang, which is the same basic model, and we were able to re-engineer the socket location to the rear of the unit. The master electric contact panel sits just after the radio controller. This panel energises the main contactor situated in the radio compartment. Situated below the contact panel attached to the skin by a cantilever bracket is the low hydraulic pressure gauge. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter, please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through the Whirlwind Fighter Project's GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the Whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum at Hawkinge. Many thanks.